done we were okay i'm one of the owners of this cyber unit technologies uh, and we also have the white hacker school which is part of the union city group uh, we're into cyber security for 10 years and uh, i will be moderating the cyber security part of and uh, there will be five solo presentations followed by a panel discussion and during the panel discussions you will be asked questions and i want the our dialogue be lively i want you to ask uh, what's really on your mind tell us about your cases and uh, we the speakers we will stay longer after the presentations and we will discuss some particular issues that are on your mind digitalization is at full speed it's daily our country according to some of the ratings is top 10 digitalized countries of the world and uh, we have a smartphone country we are recognized uh, with the european union and uh, this is the path that we can we have to continue we, we, we cannot stop and uh, digitalization is going to grow bigger and i've listened to the presentation this morning in order to grow 40 percent increase gdp 40 percent you need to have the country digitalized the more digital processes we have the the lesser bureaucracy we have and sooner or later all the companies will be heading for digitalization when we're speeding up the digitalization process uh, we need to take care of the security this is like when you're speeding if your car speed is high you've got to think about security and safety of the people riding with you in the car and um, today we will be discussing uh, whether there's a difference uh, in between cybersecurity of an individual or cybersecurity of a company, companies that you work for, or maybe the, the CEO of which you are, there's no exact limits or a split line that we can draw to separate one from the other. We will talk about all of this, and uh, I hope that our dialogue will be interactive put your questions on paper, ask them at the Q&A session. And now I would like to ask Vitaly Yakushev, my colleague in cybersecurity. He is operation director, director of 10 guards. Vitaly, the, the stand is yours. Please come here. And we will discuss who can be hacked this, if the size of the company matters. Uh, does the size matter? I would like to ask you this. Good afternoon. The size of the company does not matter. The size does not matter. Let me tell you, I would like to start with the saying, with the line it's pronounced at a hacker event in the USA. There are two types of companies. You know this line very well. Some companies know that they've been hacked, some uh, don't know that they've been hacked. So a couple of years ago, this line has been paraphrased. There are two types of companies one companies have already been hacked and the others don't know that they've already been hacked so let's talk and uh, if you haven't been hacked yet you will be hacked and the size of the company does not matter let me give you a couple of words and my name is Igor I am I work for 10 guards I've been with the cybersecurity for a long time it used to be my hobby now it's my business you got my uh, contacts take a picture of my, me uh, contact me on the social networks subscribe become friends with me i'm talking very fast because uh, i'm asked to be told uh, about the cybersecurity in a matter of 10 minutes and uh, this is very tough so i will be submerging you into the topics there will be more colleagues of mine that will pick up over from me i'll tell you why cybersecurity is so much important and how come that what you invest into the cyber security is the investment but not all uh, expenditures that these are the two most important myths uh, i'm a small company i'm not a uh, public company i don't have millions or billions who will hack me only big companies are hacked i'm a small company and no one really needs me but this is a myth and you can bust it very fast with true facts uh, the attacks that target big uh, businesses the apt attacks organized by cyber groups uh, there are only 10 percent of those types of attacks and uh, i'm telling you the number is increasing over year over year 
but the number of these types of attacks is just 10 percent and uh, and all mass attacks that damage both big and small companies and why because we're all any company of ours i'm a director of a company and uh, I'm, our company is digitalized and uh, there's not a company that i know in ukraine maybe there's a I don't want to name a country. Maybe there's a country somewhere in the world. No business is digitalized, but this is not the case of Ukraine. Even the smallest of uh, the person selling some some vegetables at an open-air market, they have got uh, in Excel the amount uh, that they've sold, who they've sell, sold to. This is a small RP system. And the majority of the systems you have one S and uh, so that's the backside of the audience they got. You tell them Odin S. They say one S. What is that? S one is a accounting system used in Ukraine. And uh, when hackers break into one of the sources that your business has got. The hacker can damage you, and you can have losses. And uh, if I I can damage and uh, incur losses, I can earn with this. So the majority of the hackers monetize their attacks. They earn by attacking. And let me put it like this: there are two of the most popular attacks, and uh, to, uh, the number one top attack is the phishing attack but we will discuss them later i will tell you a little bit more about this but the first was the ransomware attack this these attacks when something is encoded and then it's uh, you're you're asked to pay either in bitcoin and then we will decipher that information so when bitcoin started to become popular this type of attack started being popular and uh, before that there was something like pay send some money to the mobile phone but you can trace easily the mobile phone and you, the that mobile phone can get easily blocked uh, so this cryptocurrency is a driver of these types of attack which are numerous and uh, we encrypt something pay money for us to decipher so now evolution number two we uh, encrypt information but before that we download all the information if you don't uh, pay us money you have to pay us money for not making the information that we've downloaded from your account public so because the black hackers they do have brains and they do want to earn money i'm not going to be talking about breaking up over brazilian meat factory where the um, uh, i'm not going to be talking about the, the cipher and encoding the pipeline when the oil was uh, encoded was encrypted I, I would like to tell you that losses of a state-owned companies in usa is under 20 billion for year i'm not giving you any ukrainian companies examples which are on the next slide i'm just telling you that uh, we don't like share fails because we always brag around saying that we've never been hacked, but we know we are contacted by the clients. So there are two companies. The size doesn't matter again. One of the companies uh, is a big, has got a big Ukrainian e internet store, not the largest one, but quite a considerable uh, e store, internet store. I messed up a little bit. Correct. This is the this is a top 30 company. The heading is wrong. This is a top 30 company of more than 10 million. I'm not sure what their annual income is. Their system was encoded. They called us and say, please help us. I'm asking if we have backups. They say yes, we have backups. So. The backups were right next to the original version. Everything was uh, encrypted uh, by the hackers. We tell them, bring us the information. We will try. Probably there's 1% of something that we can use to unencrypt the information. While we were negotiating for them to bring the information to our office, to copy the disks and everything, they paid $9,000 uh, as ransom and information got decoded. So they were like, but sometimes people pay money and no information is decoded so they lost the, the decoding key so this is what we see 10 millions per year and now th there's a small company under 1 million and uh, the company I'm not sure about exact figures 500 to 600 uh, dollars per year 
but they pay on three thousand three times less but their income is dozen times uh, smaller nine towns for a company of ten million dollars and three thousand for a company of five hundred uh, thousand of income these are two different universe you know the companies are different but they are victims of hackers and be sick business email compromise attack a different type of attack they're popular starting with 2017 there's a french tv company pate you might have seen it it's it's got a yellow logo with the chicken with a hand they produce nice funny french comedies and uh, they've lost during an attack under 20 million of years so this is how it's happening there are two counter agents one owes to somebody so one of the counter agents is hacked uh, requisites are substituted and uh, the money is sent to a different fake requisite and when you see that the money has been sent to a fake requisite that's too late that they detect it and uh, and uh, let's take a look at American companies because Ukrainian companies do not share it and the two billion of dollars is is the amount of losses in the USA business email compromise this is not fishing this is when a counter agent is hacked and uh, somebody gets into the emailing in between the two and the requisites are substitute for the fake ones in Ukraine things are getting worse it started during the coronavirus times because companies work uh, remotely not all the employees stay in touch constantly one with the other and there's a big company on the 50 millions per year but I, I, I'm not sure maybe they even have hundred a million turnover per year so this is a big online retailing company it's um, <coughs> They had to pay some money for the goods so you're to a European company. The European company got hacked, and this retailer sent 90,000 90, euros to that company. But the two most uh, recent payments were blocked by the bank because bank people checked out that the money were heading, was heading for wrong destination. So they, so they paid 90,000 euros, and uh, a small company approaches us. They are a very small company. They also counter agent was hacked, a Chinese company, and for some reason, instead of paying to China, they pay money to Hungary. The question: Why did you pay uh, to pay Hungary? Everything looked similar. Even the seal was uh, faked. So the hackers are professionals. So these two attacks have nothing to do with the size. Any company can be hacked, and again, ninety thousand euros and five thousand euros. This seems to be a big difference in between the two companies, but again, the incomes are way bigger. <coughs> so the small company paying 5,000 euros, is, it's their monthly income, EBITDA. Hackers are pragmatic, but lazy at the same time. In order to hack a big company, you need uh, to invest you need to put a lot of effort because big companies try to protect themselves of small companies say no one needs us we don't need any protection so sometimes uh, it's even more frequently it's uh, to uh, earn a little bit with uh, the big companies and the same story is here you earn you hack big companies uh, from big companies. So it's better to hack small companies, the hackers think, because uh, you, hack up, uh, uh, you hack a lot of small companies, you earn a lot. But if you hack a small company, you can have uh, something, but that something can actually kill you. You remember the, the big American companies that actually crashed Russian hackers? The Russian hackers had to see the, the, the coding keys uh, without any ransom being paid so and now hackers think that it's better to hack on massive on mass small companies other than hack one big company is this okay yes thank you very much everybody's hacked big companies are hacked small companies are hacked if we calculate the loss uh, that uh, small company may have per one uh, employee the level is higher so you need to take care for the cyber security no matter what size you company you have Garmin was hacked in several years ago that's the world known company they could do nothing they had to pay tens of millions to hackers as ransom this happens every day 
these are the trends and the question what's got to be done if you've already been hacked and uh, information is being extracted has been leaked this is what Maria Skakun will tell us about she's a chief lawyer and CBDO with the Avitar company Maria the mic is yours thank you very much Igor for the introduction and I, I represent a local legal company Avitar and we are into the compliance for the business working online and we uh, touch upon the issue of protecting personal data user-friendly customer uh, settling agreements and we're into the web accessibility thus uh, speaking about personal data protection we help companies act within the legislation requirements both in ukraine and abroad mostly europe the usa the middle east and definitely Ukrainian companies, international companies approach us when it's a little bit too late and it's mostly when they've uh, some data has have been stolen or users approach them s or users approach us saying that something of the kind may happen they could have can be hacked we will talk what's got to be done so the data leakage does not affect uh, the company we'll take a look at the practical case data drainage leakage what's bad thank you very much for highlighting that it can be a problem to anyone this these are reputational risks definitely it's more important for big companies in which b2b sector is important it, and the part of which due deal is uh, investigating of what there is in public access about the company any leakage of information will affect the company recently soft server lost some information and uh, google soft serve leakage and you have 10 links and that will be information as how this impacted them and uh, some of their b2b clients most likely will not turn to them fees fees and fines speaking about ukraine and other countries uh, the legislation says that the fines are big it, they're not big in ukraine but we need to be ready that there's a draft law being developed that will increase the amount of fines we used to be afraid that if we for example go to the european market any leakage of information may m m lead to big fines now we should get ready that even staying in ukraine and uh, using ukrainian personal data we may one day pay lots of fines in ukraine it's under 34,000 of grievances in the nearest future in uh, 18 months we will probably we will maybe find that the amount of 8% of the annual turnover of the company and definitely if there's confidential information that we have any leakage may turn some may lead to some liabilities under the contract so you need to check what the relations you have with your partner with your clients if you have b2b relations and then definitely you've got to be checking everything this is like force majeure no one expected that covid would come no one expects that data may be leaked uh, may be stolen thus uh, we need to check what we can potentially lose we have to reduce uh, mitigate those risks before we draw any conclusions before we start relations b2b with any of our client what you have to expect while your company grows the bigger you get the more attention will be paid to you and the lower the probability that you can conceal any leakage of the data loss of data we approached by companies that the, after the day after they lose some data they try to mitigate uh, the problems that they are having what's got to be done is not to conceal any data loss and as i've told you fines are growing as uh, the company is growing the bigger the company the bigger the fines are what happens if the information is lost uh, procedure wise you need to take certain uh, consequential steps be calm first and foremost we assess what data we we has been stolen is it confidential data or personal users data personal data is the data that you can identify the person 
and uh, if uh, the da confidential data has been stolen have been stolen this is how we react we tell the partner whose data is stolen if it's our data we come down we just learn from the situation if we understand that this was the personal data that leaked and you can also treat this data as the controller of data respectively by the one that collected it or you as the one that has received it the procedure will be pretty much the same first of all we have to stop the leak if it's a small business that you operate first of all pay attention if you don't have a strong CEO who's ready to survive this leak you have to have a strong contact to go to to get in touch with Therefore, advisable is to check everything in, in advance. But if you have been faced with that, go to a specialist who will very quickly limit the access of all of the employees and partners. For example, to all of your databases, you check all of the servers. You try to make sure you understand how many leaks there were, how much data was leaked. If you have personal data, you work with an international European market. In Ukraine, there is no right now responsibility to inform or alert users about personal data leakage. In the EU and in the United States, there is a need to do that, to alert and in inform the respective bodies controlling that. You have to make to draw up these messages in a proper way and make sure you have the contacts of the individuals who will very quickly and aptly respond to the situation. And certainly, we immediately launch an investigation and record such an happenstance within our company. All of the leakages have to be recorded and fixed on paper, and uh, this is basically a piece of an experience. Just as I said, fighting to hush down a leakage is completely senseless because sooner or later it will come out into the open and it's much better not to hide it and keep it under the carpet and hide it away from your partners, but it's much better to report about that to your partners in a proper way for that. It's advisable to have a PR contact, someone who will correctly communicate this uh, instance in a, correctly to the outside world and we have had some cases when properly informed procedure of responding to the leakage of data immediately whitened the reputation of the company and the external world treated the company in a very favorable way because they knew that the company behaved properly another thing to pay attention to and to stress you have to also understand beforehand that you shouldn't be very much afraid of leaks of information. You simply have to be poised and ready for that. It's wrong to always think that all of your systems are secure. You will never be hacked. Any company can be hacked. We have a market of white hackers, and if they manage to hack into a, any system and find any, as bug, any bugs in that, then clearly anyone who sets a goal for themselves will definitely do that also underhandedly. So you have to understand that any kind of data can be stolen. How can that be done? First of all, even when you're beginning to shape your products within your company, see how data is protected and secured. This has to be taken care of technically. First of all, there are some technical methods. If you attract the raw CTO for work, you can spread the data in a way that in case there is a leak, this will not hurt you or damage you. First of all, it's the process of pseudonymization of data. In other words, that you distribute it in different databases. Sometimes it may be that uh, everything is separate. Names are separate from the addresses and from uh, telephone numbers. And, uh, and the fact of identifying a personality will never happen because everything is disaggregated. And first of all, the team has to be trained right from the very start. It's just like little kids who have to be uh, explained to that any kind of a mischief has to be reported, has to be told on. And then together with the management, you will be able to handle that no matter what uh, an operational bug is, especially if this is down to a human element. Therefore, initially, right from the very beginning, these policies in the companies, these instructions and guidelines concerning how to interact with personal data and leakages, their number has to increase. And in case there is such an operational mistake or a bug, it will be much easier to sort it out 
if your employees come and report to you about that. And another technical point I've mentioned, pseudonymization, anonymization of information. Again, right from the scratch, you have to think of it because when ready-made products come to us and we understand that by default they are non-compliant and their systems are non-compliant uh, at a very serious stage of building the product, crushing everything and building and again everything from the scratch is much more expensive compared to when they would do it from scratch and keep advice and um, find solicitation in someone who would give them right consultations. And of course, we try to learn lessons from any kind of leakages. Once again, we record and, and teach our employees. And after the first leak, we immediately begin to take care of security. My name is Maria Skaku. I'll be happy to stay in touch with you. And I will be also very glad to take any of your questions. Thank you. Super, thanks. Maria, it's been really engaging. Unfortunately, that's the way our brain works. But quite often, we go back for consultations after the leakage of information has happened. I'm used to Saturday evenings, people calling me. This is urgent, pressing. We have to have a meeting. And I say, has it happened yet or hasn't it happened yet? Yes, it has. OK, let's meet. Let's meet up. But then the cost in order to close such a problem are much lower if you take care of that beforehand. And another thing to take into account is that when you invest, this is an investment in your company or into your personal cybersecurity. By investing in that, you become more competitive compared to other companies that don't invest in, in this kind of in security. Because if there is another batch of attacks and your competitor company hasn't been ready for such cyber attacks, they will have a leakage of information due to which they will uh, incur lots of problems and their clients eventually will be transferred to you if you do care of security. Next we will talk about investing into startups, how that happens, what attention is paid to by investors. We, I have an investor from Korea, or some of them, that say we never invest in any IT or non-IT projects and until beforehand we do the technical due diligence. And if the company is well prepared and equipped, if it has taken uh, care of its security every step of the way, then it will be much easier to attract probably money. And now we'll hear Galina Vasilevska, who is um, the head of the Accelerator, Cyber Accelerator Program. Thank you. My report today is called Cyber Security as an Entry Ticket. I think that this is realistic because the scope of the problem, how much money, huge losses incurred, and huge prospects. I've worked in five con uh, countries of the world, and everywhere cyber security has always been a pressing point. Moreover, we can also see that According to Gartner report, the world will spend $150 billion for cybersecurity alone. The question arises, why should I know about that? And what can I get from that? First off, the protection of uh, digital assets. We are all at home. All of us have remote infrastructures. And the more uh, we live in that kind of world, the more the world gets remote. And in what way can we protect and secure our assets? If you're a company that provides services, develop products, especially if you're a startup and you plan to work in something called the highest league, 100%, you fall in the risk um, company, the Fortune 500. If you used to work with B2B companies, you know what is their proposal one of the pr um, procedures to verify the reliability of the partner that you're going to work with. The risks to do with vendors are the risks um, to do with 56% of companies and the reason of 56% 50 of leakages that Maria spoke about. So the companies understand they cannot afford these losses because the losses will be eventually even more. So being compliant with the international norms, the security norms, you open up the doors that you can competitors may probably not be aware of. Another important point to mention, huge risks to do with cybersecurity are big, big, big insurance premiums. Because if you saw different kinds of insurance information for the last year, they increased by 37% comparatively. Therefore, if you have the prob company, a campaign of cybersecurity and the compliance with international 
uh, requirements, you have certified specialists on your team, then there is a high likelihood that your cost for cybersecurity will be much lower. And respectively, you are not only investing money, you are also incre decreasing direct expenditure. And also, it's a wonderful opportunity for future trends. What, some more things. If you are working in a financial market, and, and again, you are not in line with PC IDSS, you cannot scale up. But there are a lot of businesses in uh, the United States that became fintech unicorns that started with PCI DSS because that's a possibility for you to integrate with large players to enter new markets and to build new ecosystems. Health tech hit the breaks all of the health tech. There's a special panel uh, that you can hear a lot of information about the, uh, the standards and you don't understand what is hip up, then your health tech product most likely will not be able to scale up and will not be able to be not uh, neither with B2B nor with B2C clients. Another important element of that, you've probably seen one of the big corporate elements because we also have a panel about that. Apple knew about that much earlier and they created Apple Store. Play Market knew about that. That's what Play Market was meant for. And now the companies that seem to be much less technological Bosch, for instance, they're creating the app marketplaces. Amazon has a um, launch pad. Compliance with different cybersecurity criteria is one of the entry tickets for these marketplaces. This is an access to billions of uh, dollars of client money, lots of different opportunities and investments. And without being in line with these standards, you will never be able to connect to the whole ecosystem in, in question. And most importantly, let's talk about money. Some three years ago, what could you imagine about hackers? Hackers somewhere in a hoodie thinking how to pinch your money. Now this is the third trend in, in size of venture capital and one of the top 10 trends in the growing world. And over this year alone, the markets of cybersecurity has increased 14% and the overall scope of investment into advertising for YouTube, Google, that used to be compared to them. Cybersecurity has already s oh, um, beat them in terms of um, possibilities. And now this year we have already gained 10 unicorns and no other industries can also bo boast such kind of prospects. So it is one of the main trends and priorities, cybersecurity. Wonderful. There are unicorns, companies with huge capitalization. What do we care for that in Ukraine? We've just said we don't know how to make basic means of cybersecurity, but it seems to me that Ukraine has a unique situation for several factors. First of all, we have a unique concentration of technical talent. Secondly, according to Facebook, Ukraine ranks third in the number of uh, cyber attacks in the world. Any kind of a problem begins, uh, cyber attacks begin with problems. Ours are third biggest in the world, so we are the greatest platform to test these potential problems and to create, to create um, products that could repel these problems. And uh, di in the digital world, where your physical presence is not so important anymore, then the concentration for demand and for supply creates a unique investment attraction uh, in terms of cybersecurity in Ukraine. And it seems to me that in this respect, we have a very promising future for cybersecurity reasons, not only because we are developing technologies, but also in terms of uh, investment attraction. We are not an outsourcing hub anymore as a country. We source, we outsource would be unicorns. And I hope the next one will definitely be in unicorn. These are my details on Facebook or LinkedIn, and, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Super, super, thank you. Most engaging, fascinating. And we all fully understand that this is a true investment. By the way, after the technical point, this is the statistics of my company, but after technical audits, um, investors don't want to invest into companies because their infrastructure is not adequately prepared to do what they promised to do through their presentations and pitches. Next, we will be speaking about who these hackers are, who are those that we are so afraid of. And if they can attack anyone, no one, someone, for that reason, I would like to invite Yuri Malashenko, who is this chief executive officer of Security Services Group and founder of his own company. So who are hackers? Have you ever seen anyone? Do you know anyone personally? I know in which market they do their purchases. Where in Volodymyrsky market or Besarabka here in Kiev, 
Well, Maria Skakun said it's possible to go and find a white hacker, look perhaps him in the ear, in the eye, in the ear, I don't know, perhaps we have such markets and it's possible to find them in special markets where you can test them, but maybe in a way it's going to be funny, but anyway, I'm going to switch to Ukrainian, my presentation is in Russian. First, we will be talking about the rules of cyber hygiene. Raise your hands if you know any such ones. Well, I see the question two, and who is applying these rules? Few people know them, then of course fewer people will apply them, because each and every one keeps thinking about this kind of a joke. We are an uncatchable Joe, elusive Joe. But why is he elusive or uncatchable? No one wants to catch him. But you can catch him. And it doesn't mean to be a targeted attack. Additionally, we always push the buck uh, within the company on someone else. We say that Rosetta, OLX, Facebook, Amazon are at fault. They have to take care of our cybersecurity, our data. But all of you know that according to the statistics of leakages, all of this information gets lost, especially in crypto world. There is no Bitcoin bank where you can call and say, get my money back. Talking about the butterfly effect, one of the solicitors that I know who emigrated for half a, uh, a year to another country because his email account was hacked and he was dealing with offshores and there were different invoices for planes, for helicopters and villas across the board of the European area, public personalities in our country. And those people thought, we don't look for uh, anonymous hacker. This man, this lawyer was to blame because proving that you have been hacked is just like, you know, with notaries in our country. A notary is hacked and once we investigate it into a case, when the lady um, note, uh, notary was uh, corresponding with someone in the deep and dark in internet and she said, and there in this uh, interaction it was visible that she was in interaction with a black hacker. And she was trying to frame the company and say that she was not at fault. In order to understand and to raise the number of hands next time about the rules of um, cyber, uh, cyber hygiene, please go on DIA portal. All of the references you will see concerning this TV series and you will understand how well and savvy you are into cyber hygiene. It's a very serious case. All of us are in correspondence. We are sending email messages. We store not only our data, but other people's data likewise. And sometimes this can result in effect. Let's just look at the level of correspondence here. And these people, likewise, Trump is in touch with someone on WhatsApp. And when you come to think that that person has erased everything, it's not true because you cannot get into people's mind even if he's a billionaire. This doesn't mean a thing. Jeff Bosses was also uh, hacked and he had to divorce his wife and he lost half of his estate. Why does all of this happen? If you uh, set your mobile telephones on uh, plane mode, and if this telephone somewhere gets into someone else's hands, then all of your emails, all of your correspondence, that you can see it in this mode, it means that person that handles your telephone will see them too, especially right now. It's very uh, fashionable when you cross the border to steal cryptocurrency from your cash, from your um, bills. And if there is no password, then this cryptocurrency immediately gets stashed away pinched or on Viber, write th the word money, cash, just for fun. Write these words and don't send anything and the Viber will immediately tell you, use my need to you, a, a certain system, because immediately by these key words, it immediately begins to target you with advertising. And if you don't pay for that, then who pays for that? You do. And Telegram very conveniently shows to you according to your card and which, in what way and who issued you with a credit card. Talking about critical thinking, everyone thinks that Telegram is a secure thing. I took a screenshot of this one that I can complain against any kind of a posts on the Telegram. If people don't shout, I can go and complain that this is spam or it's a kind of a violence act. And then the question is, what is encoded? This is a messenger, the messenger that I um, relate to and the main idea is that it may be corporate where you completely control the perimeter and all of the keys are distributed on servers on all public servers part of the keys are distributed by the server and some people may read that but you don't know where that server is 
Uh, these are the rules. I systematize them according to messengers. I will just click through. If you're interested, just take snapshots of the information on the slides, then you will read that because it's definitely eff efficient rules. Once again, it's based on real practice. That's a very fine reference to systematize all of the settings for security on Twitter, Messenger, in Instagram. All of this has been paid for a very fine site where you will obtain a lot more information and in Ukrainian, mind you, in order to apply it on your everyday bas um, basis. Well, you can trust me, no one has modified this information. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about phishing. This is how the data market looks like. This is what uh, Pegasus looks like. I visit the exhibition where a cyber weapon is sold, but this weapon is sold against the evil, the villains. So these are the uh, uh, manuals, Intercept, Android, Windows, Mac. But this is to fight bad people. Good and bad people have got Kalashnikov AK-47. Uh, I saw an, uh, that uh, an iPhone was broken. It was contaminated with the the, uh, with the virus. It all does exist. Ransomware. Here, this is your database. This is what it's going to look like if you buy Bitcoin. You either given keys to decode or not and it's not a fact if the database is uh, encoded that the hackers will pay you to avoid this you need to to do this you the money has been stolen those who protect the president and the the parliament so the soldiers were at night they were clicking the phone somebody was in trouble if we even trade special actors the actors would call and act uh, the information so the weakest link is the cyber security person please uh, install the team viewer and so on and so forth please don't forget about it guys have nothing to do so they are up to many things how to define the phishing letter the most important is to figure out who it comes from if it, it has a purpose real bulky then it's not the website that's not the company that you expect in the letter from put it, uh, check it out and if see if this link will take you to the right site, website. Must have double factor identification is important to protect your account. It will not protect your computer against hacking and the, the passwords just like your underwear. Change it frequently, don't show it to anyone and don't rent your underwear to anyone. Take the picture of it and uh, and speaking about the protection, Albert says you cannot solve a problem with the same mind that created it. Because uh, attending trainings, even if you pay the money, speaking about cyber hygiene is cool, cool but not efficient. Efficiency. You need to train skills of your employees. Uh, send fake efficient letters. Keep them paranoid. Uh, the people and yourself only then when you expect that every letter is a phishing letter then you will be much more concerned will will be much more critical thinking this has been checked in lots of companies and so with some of the ministries we're trying to do the best we try to produce the service for the b2c with regards to the wi-fi we've come up with the solution for the vpn to protect it uh, so that you n do not use wi-fi only this small 3g modem with the vpn integrated all the settings have been done for you because if you download the vpn you pay 10 bucks for it it gets ruined and if there's no signal and the traffic goes directly to you there's not a user without special knowledge having tuned in the firewall you cannot do it so that's why we all put it into a separate box and uh, it's copied it sold 100 dollars more or less so we're on the right track and i think that vpn issue this is the only solution to vpn when it's integrated into a separate solution and you've got to be using this uh, modem speaking about fuck ups uh, the secret service has forgotten a notebook I, my notebook was stolen from a car didn't have any hard drive and the, the hackers couldn't the, the robbers couldn't switch it on i've been called 70 <laughs> times to pick it up because the secret uh, sbu agents were chasing the uh, criminals so americans 
Americans is not an absolute uh, good. Everyone fucks up and uh, everyone has problems. So you always have to be alert. Do not look up to somebody. Do your own part of cyber hygiene. If you had uh, backup copies, uh, no one will ask you or ransom. So please back up and don't store store them at the same place where you store your information. And we also developed the following solutions which limits the users keeping the him or her away from the problems. So Igor cannot switch off the lights, for example, uh, none in his team can. That's why we have a notebook in which the protect, which protect, uh, which there's a unit protects uh, all the units. It's not as comfortable as any other notebooks, but you can do whatever with that notebook. And 99%, it, it, it will protect against all the viruses. 99%. And we're developing a similar phone, Pine phone. You cannot be tapped in if you mechanically disconnect the microphone and the loudspeakers. In all other cases, uh, your small uh, your phone can be tapped in. You need to w you need to disconnect everything. You switch off everything literally. If you don't do it, you just use the interface and you can be tapped in. And it's better to keep the data using these flashcards with a pr password. If you lose this password, then the criminals will not be able to extract the information from this flashcard from the stick. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yuri. It's been int uh, you, 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 interesting to listen to what you're saying. You've heard what cyber hygiene is all about. You need to stick to the cyber hygiene rules. And uh, uh, during this uh, part, we wanted to produce a fake Wi-Fi to show you your passwords back to you. But we decided not to do it uh, because of some legal and ethical uh, reasons and uh, please do not connect open Wi-Fi sources even if you need uh, the information network badly because a lot depends on that now uh, we've spoken about the mindset of hacker and the way they can hack in now we will talk about what you leave on the net what trace you leave in the internet once you have uh, uh, served the internet. I would like to invite to the stage Alina Sapko, CEO of Siberia. She'll tell us quite interesting cases. Good afternoon. My name is Alina. Thank you for the introduction. And we will talk when you are hacked or when you place, when you put up inform post information about yourself. And we'll talk how you can be using this information for your own purpose. Speaking about OSIN, everybody make this military because uh, uh, people think that uh, the ministries of defense and the reconnaissance, the special security forces uses this and uh, the business don't know why they need OSINT. Why should we know anything about OSINT? OSINT is, a, is, the, um, a, is the data that's collected following certain types of requests coming uh, uh, a request about either a company or the individual or, or a keyword and we'll discuss them one by one so when you think that there there's open data on the internet it's only the open data that you've left there posted pictures with you or your families or places that you visit this is also open data about you that your friends leave about post about you your close friends or acquaintances school mates so on and so forth all the information that can be found about you posted by somebody else and uh, the source of open information the ones that our system work with but there are much more numerous than there are several types social networks video hostings uh, uh, research engines this is where, where information can be found about you about your interest about your sentiments about the places that you visit about your behavioral patterns patterns as a human being as a leader as an employee then the mobile phone identification those are the, uh, the those all this information is collected and the information from this application is not only information that you see of somebody uh, you this is the selection of tags and the majority of our clients 80 percent other law enforcers who use these platforms in ukraine they are the systems have already been acquir acquir acquired 
so we, soon uh, you will all be monitored and they download all this information so when there's an investigation or due diligence uh, of a project information is found that a certain individual works for a bank what bank and then people write it's a swiss department of bank a b or c so then the law enforcers send the request uh, to the very bank uh, to the very jurisdiction it speeds up any type of investigation making everything so fast uh, and corporate reconnaissance also uses this and the messengers da dark web and deep web these are two diff different stories we've spoken about dark web and everything that you you delete the pages from the in contact you know, thinking that they are no longer there picturing you at the age of 16 with a bottle of beer they're there and you can be identified not knowing your name but simply using your photo all those photos even though you've never posted them and somebody else did it for you or this is what we do we gather all this information we analyze this information and we do this according to different types type one is location with our system i can simply log in and check who over this period of these two days have actually been to the unit city with the help of your gps coordinates you share it uh, the, via the application like tinder or badu or you uh, produce geo positioning and uh, Oh, you po you probably take something that you like on the Facebook I can select through those profiles and I can do with this information whatever I want pictures all your pictures even though you think you've deleted it it's better with the Facebook but the Russian uh, social networks things are worse I can see everything and speaking about the input what I need to do it's enough a screenshot for me from the camera of, or a picture of yours that I can simply find uh, on the social network by the picture I can profile the person find the information about him or herself the workplace the profile <coughs> are easier things are easier I need to have either the mobile phone that I can identify all his or her social networks and uh, all the applications that the person uses or one of these identificators only your Facebook or web reconnaissance is the reconnaissance that has got to do with the companies or interests uh, identification risks and so on and so forth there's a brand there's a product that would like to monitor and uh, when if there's a leakage of data and it happens on the internet i can also get this information i can analyze it and i can react to this trend and uh, public thoughts it works with big electoral uh, scale campaigns of geopolitical interest uh, and uh, this is where mass thought analytic is engaged the mass sentiment detection is engaged it was used when Poroshenko was running against Zelensky uh, the segment uh, which segment positively or negatively reacts to either of the candidates to either of the trends or candidates or law and so on and so forth so it's all segmented on the internet and uh, using uh, the chatting and the social networks everything is gathered with artificial in intelligence then the portrait was drawn of a potential voter and this can be a client this can be a product of any campaign and uh, the mass uh, massive data when the entire audience is profiled using uh, country-wise every, every member of every citizen of the country will be profiled uh, Every, all the information about him will be collected and this database about the people of a certain region will be collected you simply then use the database and you see what person that is if he's violated the traffic light or has committed a crime personal personal profiling is this is what we have from the social networks uh, this is what your friends share and this is how your profile info looks like that's collected and it's reflected and we know what messengers you use all the locations all the places that you visited your sentiment of if you're positive or negative on the whole do you hate someone this is the sentiment of your activity if yes then what you're talking about the, this is the network that the information about you comes from and uh, why do we need this you need to know that it all exists it's applicable now probably somebody's analyzing you right now even as we speak this is how you can use it you can select staff uh, there are a lot of people from the middle level they profile their potential candidates to understand what person this is that they're uh, 
invite him for work, give his line, or if he's being true about his previous experience, work experience. This is number two, corporate security. To know who potentially from your company can uh, leak the passwords if there's any risk of uh, leaking leakage of information and due diligence, which is clear. Clients. Uh, this is how we can use it working with clients. First, we classify uh, classification of our leads. We have some raw data. We don't know who the, they are. They're not personalized, and we can personalize them with the help of ours. We can have a bit of information. We can have a number. We can have an ID, or we have an email. With the uh, help of that input, we can see what the person is, how old he is, where he lives, uh, what dip university diploma he's got. So, this is partial marketing. Okay, we see of clients has got to do with big projects when you would like to see to what extent the person is reliable if you are actually can draw a contract with the person trust him and you can run the QC with the system like ours and the computation of deal number number it's clear when we talk about different Facebook advertising and so on and so forth we have nothing but the ID but here this ID can be converted into mobile numbers we can call them write them send them back home send some market material to their to their home if a company is willing to invest this is a real treasure that you can find web reconnaissance this is monitoring the keyword it's not personalized but as a result of this uh, non personalized monitoring you can get uh, the true influencers in uh, specific to topics, um, selling yogurt, for example, and in certain t sometimes later, you will have top 20 potential most interesting for you influencers with who you as a brand need to interact. So this is how the web reconnaissance functions and the uh, reputation. Uh, you need to figure out who your influencers are and who hates you. And the, and the market surveillance, market um, research, if you'd like to know if there's potential that this product or service has got and what my clients are security you can use the system just like ours for analytics running the analytics of the competitors you can study their weak points and you can work with you work with debitors if somebody tells you that they have no money to return the debt to you you can check out and see that the CEO of this company travels and sells yachts they do have money they simply say that they don't have money to pay you back probably the money is a different jurisdiction and the protection of mass uh, uh, mass events following the Ariana Grande concert uh, and there was a ticket master uh, they wanted to organize events following the Ariana Grande using our system system like ours they want to be monitoring the preparation everyone who buys tickets leaves his or her personal data and uh, uh, it's not going to be a person checking thousands of profiles so there are some marks uh, that you have alerts at if you have negative sentiment and if you speak with a in Arabic saying the words jihad you will have those uh, um, accounts marked as uh, ones that have got to be monitored the location is monitored uh, everything is monitored if somebody is writing something wrong no those uh, those those big muscle guys do not let you. And they simply come to you and collect you and get you out if you are detected to be unstable. So no one's going to intrude into your device. Uh, and if you, even if you even not those who are not law enforcers can actually use it uh, to protect the other people targeting with geo coordinates. If you've attended Unit Summit, uh, let's show them an advertisement of the upcoming summit or let's sell them something. I'll send them some more information and uh, the we would like to be sharing uh, the not the Unicode but the data API we can you can send us the request about the people or the coordinate and we'd like to share with you you can ask us about the bits of information we will give you back some big data lots of other data and then the da data can be sold to the Ukrainian law enforcers as well how should you start? Uh, this is how much you pay and by the new year we will launch this mechanism on the website and you will be able to log in and find uh, the, the set of, uh, of searches and tests and uh, 
information about your friends, about your company, and you can get uh, a workplace with the interface in which you will be able to download things to work a lot uh, uh, easier in PDF, and you can buy the analytics reports uh, following uh, using keywords and so on and so forth. This is the analytics, and uh, you can visit us at our website. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you, Alina. Indeed, I thought back to a conference in the United Arab Emirates, and one of my colleagues received a text message that you are standing way too close to other people, so they monitor your location. Now we are moving on to the panel discussion, where similar things will be talked about and your questions will be raised and discussed. Prior to this discussion, I'd like to ask you, have you ever felt that someone was trying to hack into your company? If so, into your account, raise your hand, please. Nearly 80% of the presentees have already experienced that. I can honestly say that this is a human factor. This is the weakest link for businesses inclusive because businesses usually are hacked into via people, mm, some chief executive officers, for instance, or chief financial officers, mom, whatever. So a lot, a lot of attention needs to be paid to that. Now, all of the speakers are invited to take up your seats here on the stage. We will also have Sergei Bartenchuk to join our panel discussion, who is the regional director of Cisco in Belarus and Ukraine, CSK company. And now we are going to raise such issues that refer to each and every one of us. As we have seen, 80% of the people in this room, uh, there have been attempts to hack them. So let's probably start with Sergei. Can anyone be hacked? What do you reckon? And what is the cost of this hacking attack? Are people well prepared for such cyber attacks? Why haven't you asked me about my size? <laughs> Next time. That's a fine question. We usually start exactly with that. I'm supporting of the fact that anyone can be hacked, and there's a lot of statistics about that. So just to share a couple of figures with you, for you to understand. If the company only has one employee, a Horizon company has just conducted interesting studies into that, so the uh, likelihood that they will get a phishing letter is 75%. If there are five employees or more, the likelihood they will get phishing letters is 100%. So basically, you have to be fully prepared that with 100% guarantee, you will be hacked into. The cost of such a text is a good question indeed, because of course, it can be, um, the price tag can be put on that. And this cost has to be broken into two parts. First, this is the money paid to the victim for the information to be, um, I mean, the companies that paid, it's 10% of the companies that decided to pay, eventually paid $11,000 um, on average, sometimes less, sometimes more. Some of the companies paid up to $4 million. That's the first part, money. Second part, how much it cost for the company, once again, to get it back in the resilient, robust form. So the companies that paid or those that didn't pay and they still got back their code, they were lucky ones. So for them, it cost to get the system back into the normal $20,000 on average. So they will have to pay the companies that will help you to once again sort out the situation, revert your data lost. Also, f uh, different fiscal punishments and fines. That's another very serious article and clause. Marriott, if I'm not mistaken, when they were hacked into, they had to, ma to pay 120 million because as fines because personal information of the people were leaked. So this is just data. And when we are in such audiences, they always say, this is a company. The company has money. Let them pay. I am just a physical entity. That's it. But indeed, here I can also give you a couple of other illustrations. How much is your marriage, those people of yours who are married? <coughs> can it also be, um, once again, can it be evaluated in terms of money? Such people, unfortunately, also were faced with the conundrum. 
some information was leaked and they were afraid of this uh, information being promulgated. Some people paid and I haven't found any confirmed data, but some people even were suicidal because for them it was so serious. Nowadays, the heat of attacks is um, healthcare, understandably COVID-19, a great number of companies that have personal information on healthcare get attacked. So you can just imagine a public figure. Put yourself in, a sh in the shoes of a public figure. Do you want to become a character um, in some kind of a promo or an ad to be a cure for some kind of a disease? That's something that unfortunately some people may be unfortunately staged into and if you are a prominent figure then definitely the number of your subscribers will decrease that how much you cost uh, no one will put a price tag on you other than you yourself remember the uh, peta cyber attacks i believe that's the best thing that's ever happened to our market because all of the questions regarding how much do i cost were immediately it deleted because everything is now encrypted and now I can sit down and, and see how much my data is worth and how much I'm ready to pay. And if you're faced with such a question, I don't think it will be the easiest of the choices for you to make. Therefore, you do have to take it seriously because everyone will be hacked and how much you will put as a price tag on that it will be up to you. We don't even have to speak about Instagram or Dima. Two and a half years ago, the system, uh, healthcare system of uh, Singapore was hacked all of the private medical data was leaked. And the same in the United States. One of the factors that uh, contain investment into electronic digitalization, the third largest factor is evaluated to be risks with hype and um, on the other hand, leaking pr private information. Talking about medical data, if you don't want to go to cyber urologists like Vitalis, Igor's company, or mine, you need to have a cyber gynecologi gynecologist because you only go to a urologist if something wrong happens to you. Well, every month or every year, I don't do it. My friends don't do it either, but you need to be mindful of this possibility. Cyber hygiene is something needs to be targeted on a day-to-day -day basis in order to avoid having to go to such professionals. So the number of attacks is growing on a day-to-day -day basis, year on year. What ha can happen in the world that the number of attacks will diminish? What are your takes on that? Do you think it's realistic or not? No. This is never going to happen. The number of attacks will only increase because digitalization is ongoing. The money is growing, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of uh, profitability or revenues. Cyber attacks, cyber crimes, unfortunately, get cost money three billion a year uh, in order to restore uh, reputational risks. It may be also even a hundred billion. So all of these losses are only going to grow because a greater number of countries are thinking of digitalization and they're pursuing this way. So AI that they're imagining, they it's not going to help you. But AI can also attack you. Well, these days it's only attacking. All of these fakes are not protecting you. They're attacking you. A small comment to make. There was also a session on fintech here. Over 80% of cases of attacks, they pursue money. People want to get money from you as a benefit, an illicit gain. Therefore, for me, the only possibility to decrease the number of such attacks, we need to make sure that money is a problem for them to get. So far, it's getting easier because this cryptocurrency, crypto market, it just allows these people to do it without any sorts of punishments. I read some news yesterday, either it's in the UK or in some other areas, they're ready to pay salaries of $300 per month for the people not to commit crimes. That's one of the topics that they raised in one of the communities. Maybe hackers need to be paid money for them not to hack us, a small fee. Maybe the white hackers are already paid for that, but I mean the black ones, you can just say, here's an amount of money for you and as an amount of it. Yeah, that sounds funny, that sounds good. You can also apply as a startup accelerator. But I think that the character of attacks may change in the future. 
In the first place, the level of consciousness of many people as entities of these data that distribute this data left, right, and the center, especially if we talk about private data leakage and the level of attacks that will be leaking person personal data will decrease um, as a consequence of the fact that people thinking that they are committing very important data. Statistically, over the last several years, about some 30 percent amongst Europeans is the statistic data. Europeans have grown 30 percent more in their understanding of statistical data, of private um, data, of paying for well-secured information. They're ready to pay more for that. And when companies understand that their reputation, their goodwill depends on that, they will also go into pseudonymization, into encryption, and therefore leaking such personal or private data will may diminish not the number of attacks, but at least the amount of data leaked. If in the world there is a number of industries that have already won because of coronavirus, it was just a joke. Who is responsible for your digital reputation? Yeah, of course, COVID-19. There's no industry in terms of volume and um, uh, the amount of money. It's cyber security. It's a Forbes report. It's called tap, Top 10 Trends to Watch in Venture Capital. There's a huge article about the number of cyber attacks about the first half of 2021 increased threefold. Therefore, we are not going to speak about the, is the story diminishing. And if we're talking about AI, it's getting just as vulnerable because AI is people programmed. All of this is set by people. Therefore, all of the ob objects, objectives, definitely it's human. Different device security is another big trend of modernity, something that is also paid a, a great deal of attention to. That, that's why in terms of prospects and uh, the future, there's not a single premise to say that this trend is going to diminish in popularity. Now, Sergei, and then we will go to questions. Please get your questions ready. We will take about some 15 minutes for the living in and breathing interactive communication. It's uh, running commentary. We said that digitalization really speeds up different issues to do with cybersecurity. Therefore, it's just on the sideline, if you like. To me, it seems I'm under the impression that the companies that deal with digitalizations that carry this message and idea into the world, we Cisco, we uh, engage in uh, a corporate social responsibility, for instance. It has to change. You don't just plant trees, but the people who are into digitalizations, you need to do everything that the issues of cybersecurity get solved. Like we do a lot of education on cyber hygiene. Surprising as it may be, we do have some products that are free, even though we sell as a company all of the, our solutions, but you can dial open dial S, you can do it at home. It's an invisible level of protection for both you and your family. And this piece of a thing that it has to gain in popularity because you need to generate something, but then securing something is even of greater priority. I like practical tips, and today it hasn't been sounded, but how to do and what to do if the likelihood of hacking into you or your company is much less. I keep fighting with my daughters and my wife. Get uh, all your software updated. Please get your software updated. Recently, they also on the horizon, they made a report. Now more than 20% of the companies have holes and loopholes that were identified back in 2010. So since 2010, these loopholes and these gaps haven't been uh, breached. So people do not update their software. It's just the same like you open the gate and you say, come on, welcome. So a little is being done in this respect. All right, then I will throw a stone in, into your house. What about Petya? attack why didn't you update the software well that's slightly different so sometimes big companies get discredited as a result yeah by the way it's a very good emphasis to place because if you think that someone will never uh, hack into you or you don't care for that just think that you may be the instrument or the tool you may be instrumental for someone to hack into someone else you get used by someone and that gets public 
and that becomes a, um, something which is in the public domain. It's n highly unpleasant. A lot of computers are already infected, and people don't know about that, and unfortunately, they become a conduit for some kinds of uh, criminal networks. Thank you, colleagues. Now I suggest that we move on to the questions from the audience. If you have any, we will be ready to answer them. We made sure that we would like to cover the topic as widely as possible, although within an hour it's not possible to cover every single case. Please raise your hands and we will be ready to answer your questions. My question is, you have mentioned that data may be encrypted, encoded, and then they may decide, uh, demand ransom. But what about cloud services like photographs in, on Apple Cloud? How secure is that? How difficult? Is it really to re-encrypt them and these services? They definitely need to mine such things too, and they need to secure themselves against such possibilities. Is this a question to someone specifically or to whom? Right, let me get started. Some three years ago, everybody knows this cloud service, Microsoft Office 365. Then specially for it, the West uh, encryptors made so an account was broken and all of the um, things, all of the data was encrypted. And at that time in Microsoft, they did not back up any of the versions of that. We immediately saw that and on the basis of that, we made our test pro product that we sent uh, for the reasons of phishing in order to take away information from the customers and say that they are not very clever, at least. So look, we believe that clouds is a rescue for many things, but it's not a security for update. Those people who update, they may save you. Then weak passwords, what Yura mentioned, backup copies, that's something that all heavily depends on you. So clouds are not going to secure you for that because clouds secure the information in a way that maybe one day this information may also be snatched, stole, deleted, and the cloud itself can close down, can fold eventually. So clouds are good, but once again, you need to put your mind around it. I also had a slide where everything was encoded. Remember, there were a lot of different signs and characters and all of this information from your telephone or computer sounds, uh, it gets sent uh, to cloud, it becomes mega. If you don't know what that is, the people that work for mega, they cannot analyze whatever you keep or store on clouds. In any other case, toolbox, Google disk, there the information is not encrypted. Therefore, any associate, we've read recently about Facebook that they were also watching someone's ex-girlfriend. So if the, the information is encrypted, that means that you have already many mitigated some of your potential problems from losses. If it's encrypted on your telephone or a client machine, then if not, then it's just like Facebook or any other data which is not stored on cloud. It's like any other information on the internet. Let me add, we as lawyers, we uh, write documents for online services like uh, privacy policies, cookie policies, etc. And you as users, this is your personal responsibility with regard to yourself to study these documents because the companies have to, they're supposed to share the functional in, uh, purpose of these documents, which unfortunately in Ukraine don't get read, but you as the user, have the information concerning what may happen to your data. In the first place, a lot of companies limit their liability 100 to 100%. If even uh, all of the information about you gets stolen, then you may also understand which countries may obtain your data. If it's a European server, which does not take its information beyond the boundaries of the EU, but it, that still it means that its company, all of its subcontractors, fall under the um, operations of GDPR and still if a Ukrainian company is covered by European GDPR technically it's a slightly more difficult for this company to be hacked into if it's a Ukrainian legal entity if it's not uh, that case then more likely than not the companies will be more compliant additionally overall if there is this inscription encryption etc the answer to your question, whether something is secure or not, you may answer yourselves 
once you begin to interact with any new services, just like service servers, if a corporate usage you want to apply um, to a big reliable server because they will incur big losses and they will assume responsibility for the losses that you have incurred and they will definitely understand that your data needs to be insured definitely you need to pay attention to safety and security when you opt for a cloud technology another question please well i have the microphone in my hand <coughs> may i start no 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 Another speaker, please. Thank you very much for your presentation. Most interesting discussion. My case is on a different thing because we have been talking about technocratic protection, but what to do with social engineering? What's got to be done with the people who are willing independently or dependently reveal their data, not knowing that, but then they complain to the companies. With social engineering, that's my field. We've got to train them. We've got to train them. See, we've discussed the family. It's not only renewing the software. When, for example, you have to collect some data, uh, if you think that you covered everything with the social engineer, will definitely get to you through your daughter, son, mother, father, and so on and so forth. You gotta train your stuff, and you also got to people around that personal who's got that sensitive information their disposal can share it. Very few people, unfortunately, are aware of the consequences of what might happen posting certain information on the Internet, sharing some information on the Internet. And uh, you can also subscribe, uh, the uh, you have the, an agreement with the, if he or she fails, he will have some, will be punished. But again, this is a psychological impact. You need to simply understand that your employees are part of your team and they need to share all the values in the value company. Speaking about the psychology, we had several successful cases. You need to make uh, your employees a little bit paranoid to figure out who the weakest link is. You need to send phishing as a test to shape that paranoia. Definitely, this does increase the level because the rules are okay. I train MPs, I tell them Google the information about you and then they punish their daughters and sons because they posted something on the internet because they live well not just like they're declaring their tax declaration only the skills uh, you have only skills shaped when the secretary runs uh, with every letter says this is probably efficient only then the skill is uh, can actually be in, uh, regarded as shape. You will see the true attack when you check everything. Even if you start sending those letters, just like placebo letters, people will be waiting for the attack to happen. Otherwise, you can Google the rules. You can everybody's in, in YouTube uh, speakers. I even um, I am featured in the YouTube. Everything's fine, but make it as a uh, skill, like go to the shooting ring and uh, yes this should be a constant process you need to practice and it's not about employees but this is about buyers of your product i'm an internet platform i've got to train all the internet people to to do that let me reply to this in order not in order to voice a conflict with your user you've got to tell him from day one your rules of cooperation these are the documents that regulate your relations. If you see that your audience will not like the, the way their data is used, you've got to tell them everything. And uh, the GDPR, the European regulation on the personal data processing, requires documents be legible. So documents be as simple as possible and so that the 14 year old kid be able to understand it. We as a Vitar company create user-friendly documents uh, which uh, when you digest it you have to go through a flow in which information is conveyed openly in the shape that he or she understands following which he or she knows what he or she what relations he or she is in if the user knows everything you will not run into a case when he or she is complaining i would like to add something else to what maria has said this is a trend in the usa if you follow what the personal data is in the usa cpa started in 2018 there was one big requirement 
any operator, any data collector, processing organization should have a big uh, sign saying do not sell my personal data. This is a regulatory requirement that mass organizations have got now and now it's replicated into the legislation of four other states and will probably get to the federal level. We cannot make people learn, but we can uh, put obligations on the company. So the stories that we tell the employers, we train uh, 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 clients what we want to do is a very important factor in our building, our relations with them, because in the modern world we see you can buy anything, you can buy any date and you know the price and we've seen lots of unpleasant information. Trust is a factor of reputation. And if you reveal the information the right way, you create the right image of yourself. And in the world where everything is bought and sold, you being a little bit, you're being a little bit more reliable is an adv 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 competitive advantage for you. And uh, so, you need to set uh, regulation should be in place, and you need to tell that. You collect all the information that is needed and you store it. If you'd like your users share some sets of information with you, sets the passwords, give them gamification for each feature that they do to increase safety. Give them something. If you want to be more loyal to your clients, you've got to bring your clients and several more questions, Max otherwise uh, we will stay here forever and ever there was a hacker Kevin Mitnick and I think you probably know him the question how can you how can you protect you got a hardware you have software how can you protect uh, yourself against the people who are very handy and who can you know pose as if they were your employee now let me tell you this I've read these books recently, and uh, if uh, there's a, there are processes in the company, exact processes and procedures, Kevin Mitten doesn't work. He was hitting the human factor when people would wander away from standard processes. processes. So you've got to be building processes, and you've got to repeat what uh, I've said before. We need to train people so that the people have got skills. We need to do cyber training we create situations and uh, we make the processes uh, we check the process in the company and we see if the people follow the process we need to build up the processes uh, it's not hasn't been told today it consists of three technologies everybody's talking about everybody's buying but people forget about two things processes and people and uh, one the component is missing your cyber security is not there if it's a priority in your company, then it will be a lot tougher to break to hack into your company. <coughs> Imagine that there's a big company in your country and you got a blackmail letter saying that, that there's been a weak spot in the system, the personal data has been downloaded and the company starts writing back to the hacker while uh, they find the the uh, leak then they patch the leak that this the, the weak point the patch it they stop mm, writing back to the hacker is it easy f to find the hacker is it a task for the rail forcers or is it just one yet another case that they will never uncover they will never investigate and result do you have any statistics on the investigations of the kind performed by the law enforcers is it possible to find the hackers to catch the hackers and the uh, having talked to the special forces of Ukraine, if you s submit a petition, petition. So if the date is found tomorrow on the data, you will be the first to be suspect, you will be suspect number one, and you will be to blame. You will not be a victim, but you will be uh, the perpetrator. Then the company goes like, why should I care for that? Probably not in this state. And let me answer the question. We, we've seen the cases of the kind. I even visited some other countries a couple of weeks ago, and uh, this is exactly what they des described. Service had been encrypted. There's no eno not enough legislation in Ukraine to fight uh, 
it, with the help of the state that is willing to protect you. So Ukraine, there's cybersecurity index and Ukraine is ranked 68. So in our country, this is not a priority and each and ever should take care of him or herself about him, his or her safety or the safety of his or her company. And uh, once the auditing is conducted and you feel that you patched uh, the uh, weak po uh, spot and the weak spot point is no longer there, yes, you can start investigation. The duration of the investigation depends on the ability of the hacker and uh, and your ability to trace him or her fast. Uh, it happened a couple of weeks ago and we patched the weak point, the weak point and we figured out that the hacker encoded servers but uh, failed to reload them and we managed to uh, drag the passwords and the credentials that helped us to uncode uh, uh, the servers, but there was a mid, mid, middle, middle skilled uh, hacker. But depending on the quality of the hacker, you can figure out the amount of time and money you've got to invest to find the criminal, to the perpetrator. And what happens to him then? Was he blackmailing you? Was he blackmailing you? You can explain it the way you want it. So the person, while writing to us, was willing, but he said, I won't frankly help you, but you need to pay me for my help 1,000 bitcoins. <laughs> and uh, in the 1990s, uh, when hackers would find weak points in different systems, big companies get together and they agreed uh, upon something. Uh, they agreed on responsible disclosure. And uh, there are some companies who started paying money for that and uh, different programs were launched. If you're a company in which you found that weak point, if you don't have bug bounty, but the hacker is not uh, blackmailing you, asking for a lot of money, you can tell him, pay him that bug bounty. I'm not telling if he's blackmailing you, that don't. But if it's a white hacker saying that I found a weak point, I can reveal it to you, not always for free, but you have to pay me something. A white hacker will not give a figure if you want me, give me something for for my having found something. If they start talking about bitcoins, it means that uh, most likely we will pay you something, but in response we may have nothing. And if we have something, some result, uh, an assistance of a kind, and tell them yes, what is the guarantee that the file that the hacker already has will not be uh, published tomorrow in the network or with all the data that it contains? It's not the problem that the person is willing to help us and the company wants to call him a bad name, in fact, which he is not. Somebody's got the data already, Somebody, something has, it has happened. We did some homework, we drew some conclusions, big, we announced big bu bug bounty. We uh, conducted certain, did some, some steps, but it's there, they have the information, the hacker has the information, what should be done post factum. You can look for him with the help of the law enforcers and punish him or her. For that, uh, there's a uh, special cyber lab which can actually uh, record this incident, which will be admissible in the court of law. I mean, the, their, their expertise is admissible in the court of law. Uh, when the attack has already happened, this, this is my personal approach, I suggest that you patch the hole and invest the money into your system, into your security, into training of the personal cell. This never happens again. Uh, not start in a lengthy search and We've got five minutes to go. One or two questions from the audience. You be next. Alina. I'd like to ask Alina, have you ever thought about techniques of filtering of information? Because not only uh, attack cannot only be by means of hacking, but out of fun you can hire 10 to t or 12 people, and uh, on true accounts you, you can post some negative information about you, and then 
try and prove that uh, the information that is posted by those 12 uh, people is r not true. We need to find out how to filter the information because think about the reputation. So is this type of attack in a fake account used to attack human be uh, the person? I'm not talking about fake accounts, but true accounts, for example. You have 10 to 12 people's true accounts and they all post all, uh, information about somebody, post the negative information about somebody and then that, that person goes, visits his partners or visits his, uh, uh, and, and he's, he's told, look, you're a bad person. So uh, this is a different vector when a real, true or fake account uh, places some negative information and algorithms show this information negative information to the others uh, sometimes these are well-known people we ra run a study and there was a person who once mentioned that fake information live on TV so he didn't filter where the information had come from he read on a Facebook page and the and the, this Facebook page was uh, generated automatically so the information that he announced in during a TV live program was fake so this is what we do there's a solution which is called fake news monitoring and uh, when uh, <coughs> when we check the websites that we trust uh, we have them as benchmark the economies the financial times some Ukrainian uh, websites and there's some information that appears on the secondary side uh, we're not sure if the information is right of raw or fake we match the information see if we have the same information in good sources we see if it's true or fake and if it's fake uh, we check what is there is a complot theory or, or pseudoscience uh, whatever Th yeah we do it but fake accounts and everything else is not our story I ask for example their students they have uh, real accounts and all out of the blue for fun check how the system functions these are bots that shape up the opinion of the human being professional social engineer will produce an account that will never tell that this is a bo bot he's got lots of pictures taken in different places it doesn't matter artificial intelligence uh, right into the ministry of C digital transformation they visited the usa and turned out that google not only gives its, uh, uh, not only artificial intelligence uh, sends some music for you to listen uh, on Google, but there are real administrators, real people who also send you some music to listen to. Number one, number two, some of our politicians write some crap and then they say that they've been hacked, uh, and it's not them; it's hackers who wrote. This is one of the elements. You can always say that if you've been hacked. Uh, somebody wrote some fake information. Uh, if you don't uh, just say the hackers did it, not I did it. Uh, well, it's sometimes it's uh, it's a trend to blame the hackers uh, if you are uh, wrote something. Mm, Facebook is uh, is a trash place and. Uh, read the news on the websites that belong to different oligarchs uh, and you will understand what is going on in the country but what about independent uh, websites they do belong to somebody by means of an intermediary one more question after the lady and we're done thank you very much uh, it's so much fun and uh, my question is the following we've spoken a, a lot about the security uh, how to be secure uh, as individual and uh, how do I know that I'm being attacked? Like if I'm having a cold and doctor's suggestion, what are, what are the symptoms that uh, the, an attack is around the corner? Let me answer. It is, you may detect it or you may not detect the symptoms. Sometimes hackers would break into the system and system started working even better following the hacker's attack because the hackers did a great job in tuning the system and, and you know so the only thing is that you need to on daily basis uh, introduce and provide and support cyber security and make this process everlasting there is no other way out you need to change the passwords again and again you need to log out in all the devices so there's no one solution that fits all there are some signs if you keep receiving letters to renew the 
best where somebody is offering you to restore the best but when you have uh, some messages with renewing of the restoring of the best what you do it if somebody logs ex logs into your account w from an unknown device or from a different country you may set in and uh, ask facebook send you a notification when you have that notification there's a sign that somebody wants to uh, hack into you this may be a massive hack attack and you're just one of those who are being hacked two more questions and this will be it for today hello thank you for the information i'd like to know if there is hyper terrorism as a notion because we produce equipment and the software for companies state-owned companies that later on provide services to all of us transportation services etc the equipment that we manufacture is more and more automated it has more updated software with web interfaces which can get connected to the internet and gets more uh, vulnerable to all of these attacks that you're talking about so what do we get ready to and whose responsibility should it be we as the producers or manufacturers of this equipment or do you think that the companies like yours that uh, get all of this popularizing i see this already in the society maybe this is not as popular nowadays but uh, this may be just as super dangerous and it needs to be taken care of and some attention needs to be paid to it Cyber terrorism definitely exists and Ukraine is no country to avoid this problem because this uh, it ranks three on the number of um, cyber attacks in the world. You may have heard about Chernobyl when one of the uh, when the whole city was connected disconnected from electricity supply. This was a kind of attack which is done not by students but sometimes sponsored by states and definitely it targets different infrastructure objects. It may be even nuclear power stations, let alone power stations. So it does exist and responsibility lies with both these facilities, these objects of the infrastructure and the producers of the equipment, meaning you. Because if your production gets compromised, this becomes known and you will definitely get into a lot of problem in your further sales. And if your company is a public one with an IPO, will definitely recoil on you. If you think about it prior to being hacked, it's a very right approach to assume. You can hire a partner on cyber security, cyber security and use it even as positive PR saying, see, we have a security partner who has provided us with the conclusion that we are safe. So this third party may provide you with such services and you will feel much more s safer. The last question, please. Thank you very much. My question may be more pessimistic. What to do if there is a leakage of information? Because whatever we do, whatever we do to teach our employees these risks, they never get mitigated. And I'm interested in communication, how to build communication properly, because Maria mentioned that. Are there any such cases when you recommend your customers, clients to conceal data breaches? I mean, not to conceal it from uh, supervising authorities, but from subjects. Because according to GDPR, we are obliged to inform uh, the bodies, regulating bodies. But um, with regard to subjects, it's only their rights are affected negatively or even their interests are affected. But if we understand that this data breach, it's not health data, it's not sensitive data, it's not their banking cards but maybe some of the uh, searches that they did on Google. You're just a small company that is trying to exceed your client base. Will you go and take uh, and run this reputational risk if you have only 25 customers and all? Will you say to them that you have had a breach of information or will you just say to your customer, well, just hush it up? What should be done under the circumstances? Because it's not only a legal decision, it's a business decision to take as well. Because if you share it, you may lose. You may risk losing all of your clients altogether and you will have to fall down. As a company, I would ask myself a question. What would happen if they get to know about it? Therefore, more likely than not, hidden or concealed information is non-existent. There is a possibility possibility to communicate about that properly 
to stop this breach from happening, this leakage has to be stalled and restore the system. If this leakage takes place, this work needs to be done in cooperation with PR specialists, and this is not the typical kind of PR, but this is crisis PR and lawyers. If you are not even obliged to do it on the GDPR because we are in Ukraine, generally speaking, there are no any data breaches. And these days, the, the obligation to speak about that because there is no legislation in place is none. But sooner or later, everything becomes known. We do not advise our clients. We advise them against concealing uh, data breaches. Find the form in which to communicate to your data users. This has happened, but that's what we have undertaken, and so quickly. It hasn't been able to do it in an even faster way. And if you get it across to your t 25 users that in such a crisis situation you handled it correctly, swiftly, then these users will definitely never leave you for your compet competitors, because competitors have never probably communicated with them. A very brief example, check some of the latest data breach, AT&T. This is a large American telecom provider, one of the largest companies in the world, and these days they're investigating a potentially huge leak, just mind and check the ideal communication. We don't know there is a likelihood, but we have undertaken one, two, three, four, four. It's because you have undertaken these steps and you are not hiding away, shirking this responsibility, but because you know about this potential responsibility, it makes you more, um, you know, kind of a, a partner, opened. And let me say, unless you do it, journalists will do it. And our people really like, like betrayals, cheating, and they will tell so much about you. Proper communication is so much better than concealing concealments. All right, I will be the last to make a positive statement. Cybersecurity probably should and needs to be used as your cutting edge, as your competitive advantage, something you need and ought to invest in. You have to educate your clients, customers, saying, I mind your security. For me, it matters. And do a lot of PR campaigns around that and a lot of communication. Thank you very much. The participants of our panel discussion, the speakers, thank you all who have come here to come here and to talk.